discussing the claims regarding the management and the integrity of the 2020 election in Fulton County, Georgia. Okay, guys. And what I'm going to share with you is probably going to blow your mind. I'm talking thousands of ballots found. And <laughs> some of the numbers that you're going to hear are going to shock you. Okay. We've been talking about this uh, Georgia election case regarding Fannie Willis, Donald Trump, and uh, of course, Donald Trump's election interference. This blows everything right out the water. Take a listen to this right quick. And this is just the beginning. This is only tip of the iceberg. You know, I did, you know, some fairly simplistic um, research on the population of Fulton County, Georgia. And what I found out, and of course started pressing that with the elections department, uh, you know, through subsequent uh, 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 monthly meetings, et cetera, was that the numbers that I was able to ascertain, we had more voters on the active voter rolls than we did of the population of the entirety of Fulton County, and then extrapolating for those of voting age. So that became a major concern of mine and frankly, uh, you know, lasted throughout and, and continued even after uh, the 2020 election. How is it possible that you have more active voters than the entire population? OK, what I'm about to discuss with you guys today, uh, I, I think this literally blows the lid off of everything. And Fannie Willis's case is probably pretty much destroyed here. Um, I'm almost waiting to hear that the Fannie Willis, you know, district attorney, DA Fannie Willis is going to just go ahead and throw this whole case out. Judge Scott McAfee, just give it up. I mean, this board here, the Fulton County Elections Board, leaked some critical information that exposes everything, guys. OK, if you haven't already, definitely hit the like button for the video. We need to share this video. Facebook, Twitter, wherever you happen to want to share it, your friends. We need to get the word out because this was a conspiracy at one point. But here we have nine people in this meeting here uh, that are present. Actually, it's more than nine, actually. Uh, but who you're listening to right now, I want you to understand who you're listening to. You're listening to Mark Wingate, okay? Uh, so we got Mark Wingate, who is the uh, primary person who's going to be speaking here. Uh, he is a Fulton County Elections board member, and he's testifying that when he voted against certifying the 2020 election because the county did not verify the signatures of the 147,000 mail-in ballots, okay? Uh, number one, I just want to say thank you guys for checking in. Um, just drop me a quick hello in the comments. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for hanging out late. Alan Arlington, Jermaine 3739, excuse me, 312. Um who else we got in here? We got uh, Nana's Crochet Corner. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, jump in without further ado. This information is explosive, guys, okay? Um, so that was a big issue. And of course, inside that 2020 time frame, uh, really there was nothing done to uh, uh, wasn't time, and I understand all of that, but, you know, th there was nothing done to answer my questions on that. And uh, that, I thought, well, look, you know, it, it's only fair to the voters of Fulby County that, you know, we're having clean voter rolls here so that nobody's vote, uh, you know, is disparaged because, uh, you know, somebody may have come in and voted that, frankly, you know, legally should not be able to. So I think that's very, very important for the be full encounter mm -hmm. anywhere in the country. Right. But from that, um, in the 2020 election itself, uh, I had and other board members uh, had requested that we uh, obtain the chain of custody documentation from mm -hmm. the department. Mm -hmm. And none of that was ever delivered. I wonder why uh, it was not delivered uh, at re at the time of request leading up to the election and was certainly not given. Uh, we weren't giving in. Uh, was given nothing, uh, you know, even leading up to this. Let me interrupt you right there, uh, Mr. Wingate, and ask to explain for the committee what you mean by chain of custody documents. Okay. Uh, uh, in, 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 
the the election staff you know they, we had many components in many areas where that were um, absentee by mail ballots were being uh, delivered to and then uh, picked up and then centralized to a, you know the processing uh, uh, center and then of course you know there's documentation so that whoever is handing those envelopes in that case off to then it's there to sign off that they've delivered to this person and you know the, the the transportation or transport of those documents you know which was going on which goes on daily uh, standard uh, checks and balances you're not familiar uh, in in the election cycle uh, and then once they are delivered to the location that they're destined to there is another uh, signature required on a document that shows that it, you know where it was picked up driven to delivered to and then signed off on as received and th this is going on from multiple locations daily and uh you know in terms of the um memory cards that are being delivered so that they can be kept you know in security uh there's the same level chain of command docu uh, chain of custody documentation that is delivered for all of the memory cards coming in from early voting locations, and of course on election day uh, from each of the each of the precincts. All right. So uh, that, that's fundamentally what that what that en encompasses. All right, that's great. Thank you very much. I interrupted you to get that, so uh, pick back up where you were talking about uh, asking for and not receiving chain of custody documents. Okay. Well, that you know, since we we asked and did not receive any of it, you know, that to me. Is just one reason. Well, how can I trust, you know, as a board member to certify this election when I cannot receive even a sampling, anything at all, with regards to chain of custody, uh, chain of custody documents? <laughs> wow! Like this is just one big major red flag here. One red flag of many. I mean. But just to kind of get you guys caught up just a little bit, we're talking about the uh, the claim that there were more voters, number one, that there's more voters on the active voter rolls than the total population of Fulton County. Right. When considering those of voting age, um, you know, raises questions about the accuracy and the management of the voter registration lists. So this is one problem, one of many problems. OK. Um, some of these discrepancies uh, can easily lead to concerns about the potential of voter fraud or even administrative errors, right? Um, then, of course, there's the um, lack of a surveillance tape. Um, the assertion that no surveillance footage, particularly of events that were occurring at the State Farm Arena on election night, which we're going to get into just in, in just a second here. But I, I just want to kind of give you guys an idea of what we're looking at here, um, this is pretty big here, guys. This is this is this is massive, and this is what they did not want to share. Um, I don't, I wonder. Comment down below if you guys remember that water main break that took place in Georgia uh, during the elections. Um, let me know if you guys remember that water main break. Does anyone remember that? Just comment down below if you do. Um, just kind of wondering uh, if the unverified mail-in ballots were in the suitcases that came out after the fake water main break. I mean, just just let me know if that rings a bell for anyone. Uh, but but let's get back to this meeting here because uh, Mr. Uh, Mark Wingate's dropping a lot of information about what really happened and the almost uh, coordinated effort to keep this information a secret but it's now being exposed, guys, and this is <laughs> this is this is going to destroy Fannie Willis's case. Uh, yeah. So, uh, by the way, uh, we've also got uh, Patricia Matthews on this uh, in this meeting here. You got Rebecca Smith; she's an attorney. Um, let's see. We've got Robert Destro in here. Uh, this is this is this is uh, this is groundbreaking. Let me know if you guys are able to uh, to to hear me okay. I know I had some uh, microphone issues earlier today. Let me know if you guys are able to hear me okay. I appreciate you guys. Just let me know. So that was just uh, another one of the things in my mind leading up to certification that was uh, something that you know certainly was not fulfilled. Um, 
there was also at that for that election uh, the advent of this whole uh, Dropbox uh, uh, circumstance was uh, was you know was um, uh, unveiled, and then we had I I think Fulton County we had like thirty six or so drop boxes located around the county and these drop boxes at, at that particular point were set outside of uh, of an early voting location which means that uh you know they're in the you know they're in the elements they're you know they're 24 hours a day but there were surveillance cameras as required that uh, supposedly you know, were operating 24 seven so that uh, they could be monitored and anybody tried to do any damage or anything nefarious to any of those locations that that could be looked at. And, you know, hopefully somebody uh, sent out there to, uh, to, to secure the situation. But we'd ask for um, uh, not every surveillance tape, but ask for to see surveillance tapes uh, uh, on a uh, basically, you, you know, whatever, just give us some samplings of that so we can take a look at it because uh, we knew, I knew that this was going to be an important issue because of all the hullabaloo that any of us that were alive in those days, you know, was witnessing as being an issue. Okay. So there's the assertion that no surveillance footage, particularly of events that were occurring at state farm arena on election night was provided to the board members. And this is despite the numerous requests for surveillance footage, okay? So uh, Tracy Evans, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for being a member of the channel. I really appreciate you. So this lack of transparency could undermine the confidence in the election process and the security of the voting locations, okay? But uh, take a listen here. And... Uh from that request, uh, again, to uh, just, you know, the way in which it turned out, there was never one surveillance tape, uh, an inch of footage that was ever delivered to the board. Wow. Wow. And, and this is, keep in mind, this was 2020. This was the election. This was during the election in 2020. And this is before there were any suspicions of voter fraud, uh, election interference uh, from a uh, uh, from a from a ballot counting perspective. And if it was delivered to anybody, it certainly was not any board member that I was aware of or made me aware of. So that was a you know what uh, was another issue. The other issue we had down here was was this whole um questioning of uh, ballots underneath a table and then being pulled out on election night Ooh. excuse me at state farm arena well you know we did see on television by the way we did see that <laughs> surveillance tape and of course I, I as a board member and knowing uh, uh most all of those people who were in that room that night um it, 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 I, I didn't make any judgment as to what was going on. It wasn't I had I had no basis to do that, um, but I did see it. And of course, I asked the questions of our director. And um, this was, I believe, the day following election day. And uh, you know, his response was, "Well, he just hasn't had time to look into this, but he will and get back to us." Well. There was nothing ever gotten <laughs> back to, at least to me as a board member, that had any explanation of um, that election night at State Farm Arena. Wow, wow! You hear this, guys? So this is when this is this is Mark Wingate's testimony, uh, and this is a part of the the disbarment hearing for former uh, United States Assistant Attorney General Jeffrey Clark who is actually among the 19 defendants, ironically, facing various charges presented by none other than your favorite district attorney, Fannie Willis. And uh, 
we got to certification and there was still no response to that. Did not know, still being investigated exactly. Well, I think the director, in my opinion, and still believe that to this day, could have, you know, stated, look, I've talked to everybody and this is what transpired. I, I firmly believe that should have been done by the then director, uh, but it was not. And the last thing was, um, well, not the last thing, but the, the, the big, what I call the four or five things that, that prevented me from certifying was the, we had such a huge, huge number of absentee by mail ballots and those ballots. Now, keep in mind, <laughs> he's about to start talking about the whole certification process. Okay. Um, this is why he was unable to certify these ballots here, but take a listen here. Um, we, we, as the, as the department and the board, and then the uh, board of commissioners who has to approve, you know, certain expenditures, um, because it was, you know, becoming very, very clear that there was going to be a larger amount of absentee by mail ballots this, this election year than by far than in previous years. So they uh, found a term in a system that um, is called Blue Crest. And the Blue Crest platform primarily was an absentee by mail or paper ballot uh, 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 processing uh, um, application. And that would, you know, scan in the outer oath envelopes. It would open them. It would then pull them out. It would flatten them, as they call it, and then put them in bundles for, <clears throat> excuse me, for later processing and scanning. Uh, part of that, or one of the applications or elements of that Blue Crest platform uh, was a uh, an electronic signature verification component. Hmm. And of course, we all, as that was reported, we all thought that that was going to be up and running and how, <clears throat> excuse me, how exactly that the Department of People uh, 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 there for managing the FCD by mail ballot processing would have a very fine function in the electronic signature verification component. Well, as I recall, I believe that time frame was in October at, at the board meeting for October. Uh, I had asked the question, where are we with regards to the functionality of the uh, electronic signature verification component? And I was told that uh, the um, technicians from Blue Crest were in our building that day and that they were working to functionalize the um, the electronic signature verification component well, and of course he's gonna be questioned about what do you mean by functionalize the system um this <laughs> this is also keep in mind this is a very expensive system here um why would the signature verification component not be working in fact more importantly why would the signature verification component not be validated before even taking in any ballots whatsoever? I mean, this is, this is, it's hard to make up excuses for this guy at this point, it, or excuse me, it's hard to make up excuses for this situation at this point. It's almost like, did someone make sure that the signature valid validation component wasn't working right maybe it was working and someone came in to make sure it wasn't working because if you can't validate the signatures then maybe you can just have all sorts of new ballots come in voting for whoever you want if you can't confirm it you know who's to say it's valid or invalid or fake right <clears throat> So, you know, basically the reported failure to operationalize or functionalize, I think he said, you know, an electronic signature verification system and the claim that no signature verification was conducted for a, a significant number of ballots, it points to a very, I'm trying to put it very nicely, uh, potential vulnerable um, uh, uh, process in this authentication of the votes here. 
basically, how do you know that they're not fake votes, right? Functionality and functionalize. Uh, what's the plain English meaning of that? Meaning getting it to work. Thank you. If right. that makes sense, yeah. I'm sorry, I was unclear. That they were in there to make the thing work. Okay. Why and, wasn't it working know, to begin with? Certainly, you know, as we would let you know, the board meeting concluded, we went on, but um, after the fact, we 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 were not told in between that October date, and then of course about a month later, the election itself. You know, at least I was not told that they didn't that they did not get it to work. Uh, so. You know. Now, I just want to take a second because uh, I, I meant to just give a quick shout out to um, thank you, Rafa King of Clay, uh, for the huge five dollar super chat. Sorry, I just got so wrapped up in this in this exposure here of all of this corruption. And there's so much corruption that's taking place here. But anyway, I just want to say thank you, Rafa King of Clay. You are amazing. Uh, comment says. Phony Willis seems perfectly qualified to be a uh, MSNBC legal analyst since she gets disbarred, or excuse me, after she gets disbarred. She's a perfect guest for Morning Blow or Rachel Mad Madcow. Let me know what you guys think about that. Uh, this is, uh, so <sighs> Braxton Allen says something that is a little bit concerning, but I kind of have to agree. So, Braxton Allen says his life is in danger, Ron. And it's really unfortunate that telling the truth puts you in danger, unfortunately. It depends on what truth you're telling, right? But, uh, I mean, the truth is coming out here, guys. Somewhere along the line, and I can't, I am sorry, I can't remember exactly when it was, but I had to ask the question, well, okay, well, you know, what did we do for signature verification? And the comment I got back was, which frankly at that time floored me, was, well, you know, we didn't do any. None. Wow. And I remember kind of, I forget where I was, you know, I was on a phone call, I forget exactly, and I apologize, it's been so long. But, you know, I do remember that call. So, you know, this brings up... <sighs> Man, this brings up so many, uh, you know, questions and uh, polarizing stances on voter registration. Remember how many people and, um, you know, uh, groups of people, I should say, were against voter verification IDs being presented? Let me know if you guys have any problem with presenting IDs when voting, because I, I think it's just like a really simple, basic thing that should be done, right? I mean, how do you verify? Number one, how do you verify that someone is even eligible for voting if you don't have a voter, if, if you don't have any type of identification provided, right? Number two, how can you validate that someone isn't voting more than once if you don't validate the voter ID, right? Like... If you don't know who's coming in to vote through validating the voter ID, how do you know that they're a citizen of the United States? How do you know that they haven't voted already? I mean, like, this is just, this is really basic stuff, I think. Uh, Jennifer S. says Florida requires a voter registration ID card. Um, XYZ99 says... Um, illegal immigrants voting, hey, you know, and this is what a lot of people are saying, that this could be one of the reasons why the Biden administration doesn't want the border closed because, uh, and, and the, I don't know if you guys have heard the term, some uh, illegal immigrants have actually, well, actually one of the uh, really popular, I don't know his name, one of these really popular uh, illegal immigrants that are educating other illegal immigrants on how to get into the country and how to work the American system and take advantage of our laws and, and whatnot, squatter, squatter rights and all this other nonsense, um, how to 
pretend to be a fake bum and panhandle on the side of the road and make like, you know, 300 to a thousand dollars a day, taking advantage of the kindness of, uh, of people's hearts. Right. Um, these, you know, this particular illegal immigrant who I'm, you know, speaking about who was basically just trying to tell everyone to come into the country and take advantage of America. He referred to Biden as daddy Biden. So if someone refers to <laughs> the president, you know, Biden as daddy Biden, who do you think he's probably going to vote for? Right? Like if your parents were, uh, you know, in, in the running, in the race to be president, wouldn't you vote for your dad? Wouldn't you vote for your mom? Right? So here's the thing. I think it's very clear that if illegal immigrants believe that Biden is helping them enter the country, who do you think that they would vote for? And of course, that reasons to think, reasons to believe that um, if the person who let you into the country happened to be Biden, would you vote for Biden? I mean, versus Donald Trump, who clearly has an agenda to, to address this massive illegal immigration problem, right? So, you know, I think it's rather clear who they would vote for. And I also think it's rather clear why Biden is deliberately dragging his feet to address the border crisis. Amount that, you know, we didn't do any. Now, of course, I took that saying, all right, well, by law, you, you, you've got to do signature verification. You've got, you've got to at least have somebody looking at this. And one side of that is uh, that the whomever you have that is looking at and supposed to be, you know, verifying signature, that if there is no signature on the oath envelope, then how are you carrying it or what are you doing with them? And they, I, I remember going down, the, you know, on, on from that and said, well, you know, there weren't many, so we just sent them back out. And if they reply on time, then they'll get their vote counted. Wow. And I thought that was a little weak. But anyway, that's what that's as I recall, that's what I was told. All right. Sir. Those those are primarily, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was primarily the in my mind and in my reasoning why I was not comfortable, you know, in in certifying. All right. Sir. So and these votes, what? these ballots, these votes were never certified for Georgia. They or, you know, uh, or rather uh, Mark Wingate was never ever comfortable certifying these Georgia election votes for 2020. What was the vote on certification? What was the vote total on certification when the board voted? Well, there were uh, there were two uh, uh, in the board. You know, there's two Republicans, two Democrats, and then supposedly, which doesn't always work that way, an independent or a nonpartisan chair. Uh, the vote was two, three uh, to certify and two against. And that was for both certification votes? Uh, that's yes, yes. Yeah. Right. And do you have an understanding of how much uh, the Blue Crest system cost the county? Listen to this, guys. Uh, yeah, I know. I, and now. again, I, I can't be precise, but it seems to me like the entire platform was a little over a million bucks, okay. a million dollars. And, I'm sorry. I'm um, trying to clear my throat. To your knowledge, did they ever get it working? To my knowledge, no. Uh, it did, it obviously did not work uh, leading up to and going through any of the 2020. So a million dollars of taxpayer money just wasted if it never worked. Elections. And I, it was not, I don't believe uh, that if, I don't believe it was working either, you know, for the um, runoffs that we had coming out of 2020. Wow, of course, the runoff elections. Guys, what is going on here? Uh, let me know. Give me some feedback here, guys. What do you guys think about this 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 knowledge bomb, like literally being dropped on us right now? Um, this is a massive revelation that we've kind of like. I think we've always probably thought that this is what was happening. Uh, 
obviously we never had this level of detail, but I think it's just unbelievable. Uh, what is the phrase? I, I forget how it goes. Like, you know, what's done in the dark eventually comes to light or something like that. Does anybody know that phrase? But anyway, uh, I, I think that this is the year of revelation here. Like, this is crazy. Uh, palsy rock and roll says 147,000 votes is a big deal. I would have to agree with you. Thousands of fake votes. Like, are you kidding me? Um, let's see here. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I have to agree with, um, with XYZ 99. Big stories are about to start breaking. This is, it's, it, it's like, man, so we're finally getting the truth behind the fake votes, uh, you know, the, 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 the whole ballot situation taking place in, in, in for the Georgia elections. I mean, like Fannie Willis has, has got to be devastated after this Fulton County Elections Board leaked all this information um, that has essentially been kept under wraps for so long. And it's finally getting the exposure that we've been asking for for a long time. I mean, this is disgraceful. Um, this, how is this not the greatest example of election interference that we've ever experienced in the United States, right? Um, oh yeah, this is, this is, this is so wild. This is wild. Uh, and then someone was saying that, uh, here it is. Gary Owen, excuse me, Gary Owen says Dominion machines are easily hacked. Um, wow. Yeah, guys. Yeah. So whew. anyway, uh, I wanted to kind of just kind of quickly go over this with you guys. I mean, like there's there's so many issues that there's so many issues with this. Right. I mean, you got, um, you know, the, the, the whole you had the lack of surveillance uh, tapes that were essentially never provided. Uh, the discrepancy between the voter rolls and the, and the population, the claim that there were more voters on the active voter rolls than the total population of, of Fulton County. I mean, like when considering those of uh, voting, voting age, you know, all of this just raises questions about the, the, ac the accuracy of the vote count. Um, you know, you got the discrepancies that can lead to concerns regarding the potential for voter fraud or administrative errors. Just trying to keep it politically correct here, right? Because these are all allegations, right? Nothing's quite been proven yet. Yeah. Um, then, of course, you got the lack of the surveillance tape that, um, oh my God, what is his name? Uh, that uh, Mark Wingate had brought up. Um, the assertion that no surveillance footage. Uh, particularly of the events that were occurring at the State Farm Arena on election night were ever provided to the board members, uh, according to Mark's recollection, uh, or at least not provided to him, despite multiple requests for this footage from State Farm Arena. And, you know, of course, the lack of this lack of transparency could easily, easily undermine the confidence in the in the election process. Um, because there's multiple voting locations, so you got to keep tabs on every location. So if you can't at least get the video footage, how do you know that everyone is playing fairly, right? Um, what did he bring up? He also brought up the, the missing chain of custody documentation. The testimony, uh, or at least Mark Wingate's testimony, he's talking about how there was like, there was like no chain of custody documentation for the ballots, or for the election materials for that matter, right? And obviously this documentation is crucial for making sure that, you know, all materials have been handled securely and appropriately throughout the election process. I mean, you know, if you don't have this, then what security do you have that votes didn't just get thrown away or extra votes didn't get added during, um, during the, the, the trend that, because these basically there's a, a whole huge bin, multiple bins that end up getting collected from all these different voting locations. And they're brought to like central locations for counting. And this is what takes so long, like when when, when we have the elections and we get the, you know, we start getting the, the poll numbers throughout the night. And usually the poll numbers, they don't finish until like the next day, sometimes even the day after, right? Well, what's happening is that there's a process that 
allows these votes from all these different sites within a state to be collected and brought in for counting. Well, there's a chain of custody that needs to be uh, followed. Well, apparently that wasn't followed for Georgia. Who knows how many other states this wasn't followed for either, right? Then, of course, you got the signature verification problem or issues, right? Um, you know, regarding the uh, verification of signatures on the mail-in ballots, the, the, the reported failure or, you know, the reported failure to functionalize an electronic signature verification system and the claim that no signature verification was ever conducted for a significant number of ballots, it, here we go. You know, we're, we're looking at potential fraud again here with the votes. Can't authenticate the can't authenticate the vote. So, oh man, um, uh, sorry guys. Uh, someone is complaining that there is some uh, feedback, extra feedback from the microphone. Um, I just moved one of the microphones away. Hopefully that is uh, improving it for you. I, I I don't know. Let me know if it if it sounds a little bit better. I apologize for the microphone issues. Um, let me see what you guys are saying in the comments here. Uh, Greg, Greg Gosnell says that the problem is in several states. Um, James Evans says that you are this, that, that it's a crackling sound. Okay. Enough is enough says that it's better. Freedom rain says that it's better. Okay. Hopefully it is better. Okay. Um, sorry about that guys. And thanks for letting me know. Um, then, of course, there's the Dropbox surveillance security issue, you know, um, the drop boxes for the ballots and, uh, you know, concerns over the surveillance and the security. I mean, <laughs> this is these are huge problems. And it, it's hard not to think that this wasn't done intentionally. Right. The use of drop boxes in elections, you know, including their accessibility, monitoring of the drop boxes, you know, this leaves the door wide the freak open for tampering. So and then, of course, a million dollars invested over a million dollars invested on a election platform, this Blue Crest election. I think that's what he called it. Blue Crest that was allegedly never even fully operational specifically the uh, signature val uh, validation uh, functionality component to it, right? So, like, you want to hurry, you, you want to show, you want to see how quickly you can lose public trust? I mean, this is horrible. This is horrible. So, now the question is, do we have the right president in office Right now, have we had the right president in office over the last three and a half years? You guys let me know. So uh, let me jump in the comments with you guys. Let me see what you guys are saying. Um, thank you, Rafa King, for the huge $10 super chat. You are absolutely amazing. Um, uh, any of these churches allowing the <laughs> adulterous Jezebel, Fanny Willis, to speak at their pulpits, are an affront to God and zero consideration for Nathan what excuse me and zero consideration for Nathan Wade's ex-wife who is the real victim wow that's a powerful statement I, I appreciate you sharing that uh thank you Rafa King uh and thanks again for the massive uh ten dollar super chat I really do appreciate the support hey guys by the way if you're in here and uh you know if you haven't already definitely hit the like button for the video I totally appreciate you guys and, uh, and I just want to thank you guys so much for sharing these videos to get this information out here because I don't know why, but mainstream media doesn't necessarily want to cover this. Uh, certainly not to the extent that um, that it should be covered, in my opinion. Let me know if you what you guys think about that. Um, you know, and I, and I keep seeing in the comments here, I forget who it was. Somebody was saying, like, we're better off. <laughs> The, the benefits are actually better for illegal aliens than it is for actual American citizens. Uh, you know, unfortunately, in a lot of cases, you're right. Unfortunately, um, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that that does change because, I mean, yeah, I, I had a conversation with my wife earlier today. We were talking about the whole squatter rights uh, situation. And 
I, I can't help but get pissed off thinking about it. How in the freak do you have a law on the books as as well as these politicians are being paid? How do you have a law on the books that literally protects the illegal activity of essentially breaking into someone's home, staying there for an extended period of time, and then the the property owner, the owner of that particular piece of real estate is at a legal disadvantage from evicting them. Like, can you imagine someone staying in your house that you own without your permission and then you go there, I don't know, maybe it's a summer home or something like that. You go there, you stick the key in the lock and the, the key doesn't work because whoever decided to break into your house change the locks and now you can't get in and then you go and call the police and they can't do anything for you they won't do anything for you did you guys hear about the situation where the woman um basically got arrested for i forget what the charge was but they ended up arresting her rather than the squatter that about pissed me off and it blows my mind why we have lawmakers that are not protecting american citizens not okay with me. Uh, thank you so much, Andrea Goff, for the $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, so Andrea says she is a Jezebel, laugh out loud. Uh, love your show, watch you all the time. And I really appreciate that. I, I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Catalia in the house, thank you for thanking all of our uh, super chatters this evening. I appreciate you, Catalia. Um, yeah, this is uh this is this is pretty pretty awful. Anyway, uh I'm going to go ahead and leave it right there guys. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me this evening. You guys are absolutely amazing. Again, if you haven't already, definitely hit the like button, subscribe, share this video and uh and I'll see you guys as soon as I can. All right.